Seismitoad from Obsidian Flames is super cute and unassuming looking, but don't let its soft and humble demeanor fool you. This card is a terror to play against in Gym Leader Challenge format. If you're new to Gym Leader Challenge format, don't worry. It's super fun and easy to get into. There's just a couple of things to keep in mind when building a Gym Leader Challenge deck. Gym Leader Challenge decks can only contain one type of Pokemon. It is a monotype format. It is also a singleton format, so you can only play one of each card except basic energy in your deck. And then finally, there are no rule box cards allowed in GLC. If you want to learn more about Gym Leader Challenge format, make sure to check out gymleaderchallenge.com. It's a great resource for getting started. There are lots of guides and sample deck lists that you can take a look at. Gym Leader Challenge is my favorite way to play Pokemon cards. I highly recommend checking out gymleaderchallenge.com. Seismitoad is a disruptive force in GLC thanks to its Quaking Zone ability, which reads, as long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, attacks used by your opponent's active Pokemon cost one colorless more. Many attackers will simply not be able to get the energy they need to attack Seismitoad which really favors Seismitoad since it's got the Echoed Voice Attack, which does 120 damage for two water energy, and during your next turn, it does 100 more damage. So while your opponent scrambles to find an answer for Seismitoad, you'll be firing off Echoed Voice Attacks for 220 damage a turn. With 170 hit points, Seismitoad has a respectable amount of HP and is very difficult to take down. I like pairing Seismitoad with Palafin and Feraligator in my Water GLC deck. Both Palafin and Feraligator have low energy attacks that can do a lot of damage. Palafin has the Justice Kick attack, which does 210 damage for two water energy if Palafin moved from the bench to the active spot during your turn. And Feraligator has the Giant Wave attack, which does 160 damage for two water energy and you can't use Giant Wave next turn. With Feraligator's Torrential Heart ability, you can boost that Giant Wave damage output all the way up to 280 damage. So while Palafin and Feraligator are the heavy hitters in this deck, Seismitoad is very disruptive, is great for knocking out low HP threats on the first Echoed Voice, and then the following turn can KO just about anything in GLC with a 220 damage echoed voice. In today's tabletop gameplay, I'm going to be piloting my water GLC deck against my buddy Alex Holtz playing Darkness with a Guzzlord in it. A very scary card to play against. I'm stoked to get to the gameplay, but before we do, let's hear a word from my sponsor, Full Grip Games. FullGripGames.com is the best place to buy Pokemon trading card game singles and sealed product. We've got super fast shipping and top of the line grading. When you buy a near mint Pokemon card from FullGripGames.com, you can rest assured that you will receive a near mint Pokemon card. We've also got Twilight Masquerade sealed product available for pre-order now. And if you're looking for some extra cash to spend on that Twilight Masquerade sealed product, make sure to check out the Full Grip Games buy list where we are always buying bulk and singles. Selling your extra cards to FullGripGames.com directly supports the content that I create here on Tricky Gym. So thank you so much for buying and selling at FullGripGames.com. Now, let's check out that GLC deck in action. And good luck. Good luck to you. Draw for turn. Put Chaotic Swell into play. Play Dive Ball. Got Finizen with the Dive Ball. I'll attach water to the Finizen. Pass to you. All right, let's see what we can make happen here. Can't really play any of these cards, and there's not much else to say about that. So we'll pass the turn to you and hope you don't have the turn to 210. Yeah, that, that'll do it. Let's try again. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there, Alex? <laughs> skill difference yes i think you did just um, get skill diffed but sure. actually seeing how easy that was for you uh we'll re-roll the whole set that's fine good luck good luck to you draw 
Got a reasonable enough opening hand with Totodile and Croconaw, which I like. Level Ball and Quick Ball means that I can use Quick Ball to either search out Remoraid or Sobble, and then Level Ball to go get Drizzile or Octillery next turn to start drawing cards. So certainly liking this opening going first. I don't need a Sporter yet, because I can't play it going first anyways. Bench Totodile. The Rescue Stretcher could go, or... The Chaotic Swell can go. I think I like turn one Chaotic Swell against Alex, because if he gets the Guzma Holly, he can't Artisan. So that's pretty good. Quick Ball to discard Rescue Stretcher. Well, let's take a look at what we got prized. Got the Croconaw in my hand, so hopefully for Alligator is in the deck. It looks like for Alligator is prized. No. That is sad. We've got the entire Intellion line. It looks like Remoraid is not here, so it's going to be a Sobble into Drizzile angle. With Quick Ball, I'll grab Sobble and Bench Sobble. Put Chaotic Swell into play and pass to you. Draw for turn. So the Chaotic Swell is actually a little bit more annoying because I can't Dark City the Guzzlord out. But we do have both Coughing and Hoopa. And the question here, so I know I'm going to play Iono, where do I put this Dark Energy I might just be content attaching to Guz and discarding the top card of his deck this turn. So we'll go ahead and attach to Guzzlord. I'll play Iono. This is great. Drew the battle VIP pass. Prize check here. The Lipard's there and the Purloin. That's perfect. Need to get the Purloin out, start drawing some cards. I do have the Zorua in hand so we can get a full bench here. The question is, do we get Sableye? Probably get Sableye and Purloin. Zorua, hold the quick ball for now. Mountain Munch. Ball guy down, okay. Not Draw. the best card to discard, but... That's fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I actually have Verse Seeker in my hand. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Draw. Funny enough, Alex milled the ball guy, but I do have Versus Seeker, so if I want to ball guy this turn, I have that option available to me, and I actually think that that might be the move to really help set up my board and establish things. That, or I'm just going to play Marnie, so I'd rather ball guy this turn and Marnie next turn. So I'll Versus Seeker for ball guy and play ball guy. Ball Guy allows me to search my deck for three balls and put them into my hand. We want Hisui and Heavy Ball, probably Dive Ball. I've got Ultra Ball in the hand. Can also go get Nest Ball or Level Ball. So I'll probably get Nest Ball, Hisui and Heavy Ball, and Level Ball. I think all three of those. Save the Dive Ball in the deck for later on in the game because it can get bigger evolutions. Play Hisui and Heavy Ball. Which allows me to look at my face down prize cards, take any basic Pokemon I find there, and put them into my hand to trade it with the Hisuian Heavy Ball. So we'll take the Remoraid, Bench Remoraid, play Nest Ball. With Nest Ball, I want to start setting up probably Finizen. I could get Seismitoad into play this turn. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, let's do that. I'll Nest Ball for Finizen. Play Professor's Letter. And with Professor's Letter, I'll search out two Water Energy. Ultra Ball, discard Hisuian Basque Legion and Counter Energy for Seismitoad. And then Level Ball. Gosh, water is so broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Level Ball for Drizzile and Evolve Sobble into Drizzile. Use Shady Dealings which allows me to search my deck for a trainer card when I evolve it. We'll Shady Dealings for Rare Candy, and then use Rare Candy to evolve my Timpole into Seismitoad, attach a Water Energy from my hand to Seismitoad, and Seismitoad has the Quaking Zone ability, which makes it so that as long as Seismitoad is in the active spot, Alex's Pokemon's attacks cost one colorless more energy to use. So hopefully that will act as a deterrent and make it a little bit more difficult for Alex to launch powerful attacks. I'll pass to you. All right, draw. So this is not great. That ability stopping me from Assault Gating or even Ascensioning. Playtown map. I was thinking 
if Alex can get the Galarian Weezing into the active spot, he can turn this ability off. But the fact that Quaking Zone stops you from using Ascension this turn yeah. is pretty crazy. Really, you've got a lot of locking components that are frustrating me. Guzman Hala, discard Dark, Quick Ball. I think my best play here is actually to grab a double colorless and a float stone so that I can just start disabling with Sableye. I consider my hand's kind of dead. I don't really have a way to evolve anything. So with the Guzmahala, grab Artisan, double colorless energy, and float stone. The Artisan I don't really have a use for. So out of the two stadiums to bump Chaotic Swell with, I think this is a fine time to do it. Now this is a cool interaction. You're going to be able to use Disable with the double colorless energy because Disable only costs one colorless energy. And Seismitoad only has one attack. So you can effectively render it useless while you try to draw out of this situation you're in. Anybody who's astute last turn might have noticed that I forgot to use Excavate. So this time I will not. I'll use Excavate. Oh, that's tough. So uh, it is the Zoroark. So really what I'm thinking here is, you know, I'm about to waste this double colorless on Sableye. He did Drizzile last turn. His hand's probably pretty good, but I kind of need to draw out of it. I don't know if I can afford to discard it. Uh, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Play the Artisan to bump the Swell. Floatstone the Guzzlord. Retreat into the Sableye. Double Colorless. And we'll use Disable for 10. And Disable Echoed Voice. So now Seismitoad cannot use its attack next turn unless I'm able to switch it to the bench, which resets all effects on the Seismitoad. Draw. I top deck Tate and Liza, which is a nice switch card. I can use Tate and Liza to get the Seismitoad back to safety, maybe use a different attack and put some pressure on. I think I like that. So I'm going to evolve Finizen into Palafin, attach water energy to Palafin, and Tate and Liza for the switch effect to move Seismitoad to the bench, Palafin to the active spot, and I'll use Jet Punch, 30 damage to the Sableye, and 30 damage to your Coughing. All right, draw. So does the Zoroark. So at this point, I'm thinking that with the Seismitoad on the bench, Disable is not really going to do much, but I have the option to Ascension and get the Weezing out. I don't know what's in his hand, but it would cut off two of his ways to get out of the one card hand in Octillery and Inteleon. So first we'll excavate, and it is an N. I'm definitely leaving that there, and I think being able to lock abilities would actually be great now, now that I know my next turn draw is going to be good. It would force him to have an energy and an out to Toad to knock out the, the Weezing, so evolve to Zoroark, and I hate hard retreating off the DCE, but it must be done. Yeah, that's not going to be your top deck anymore. Oh Chief. my gosh, I didn't even think about that. So let's let's, let's not do that. Let's think. Let's at let's least think this that. through again. Yep. <laughs> I literally, as soon as I put him in the active, I thought about that. I was like, I'm about to search my deck. All right, redo the excavate as well. I actually think I think I want to do this like when you look at your excavate, hold it like hold it here. Yeah, look at that. So it's the end. I will leave it there. I guess I am content to disable this turn. <laughs> seeing as odd would search my deck so the question is where does this dark energy go Let's see i'd put you at 140 that could potentially get there on a red banquet i mean it, it, can, it has to go on to guzzlord right and i think that we just prevent the coughing from getting knocked out by disabling jet punch for 10 all right palafin takes 10 no more jet punch draw Ooh. top deck octillery i like that do have Marnie in my hands, but I was kind of giving myself some time doing other things with the Tate and Liza while I noticed that Alex didn't have the strongest hand. Hello Abyssal there. hand for a draw of four. And I found Pot Helmet, Dive Ball, Buddy Buddy Poffin too. Buddy Buddy Poffin can get me the Cast Form, which is a free retreater. If I want to switch this Palafin in and out of the active spot this turn, that would be good. Missing an Energy Drop isn't the greatest... I don't have any more ways to get energy out of my deck. So it might just be a best kind of situation to play a big draw supporter like Colrus for 10 or something. You know, that could be really good. And I could take a double knockout. If I can Colrus for 10 and find like switch muscle band, that'd be kind of crazy. Let's see what we can do. Play Buddy Buddy Poffin. 
with the Buddy Buddy Poff, and I think I'm just going for the Rainy Form Cast Form. Has a little attack, does 20 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon, but mainly here for the free retreat. Cast Form goes to the bench. Play Dive Ball as well. Intellion for Switch Raft and Muscle Band seems pretty nuts right now. I've already got Marnie in my hand. I really wanted to play a Culverse or something to get an Energy Drop this turn, but I don't even really need it. I think I can just kind of sit here with the Seismitoad. You know, taking two prizes is really good. Put some pressure on Alex, too. So I'll Dive Ball for Intellion. Evolve Drizzile into Intellion to use Shady Dealings. With Shady Dealings, I'll get Switch Raft and Muscle Band. Play Switch Raft to heal 30 damage and switch my active water Pokemon to the bench. We'll promote Cast Form with the free retreats. Attach Muscle Band to Palafin and then retreat Cast Form back into Palafin. And since I switched that Palafin to the bench, the effect of Disable is gone. I'll use Death Punch for 50 damage to the active and 30 damage to the coughing on the bench to take two prizes. Well, now I feel like Ascensioning was definitely the right play. Throw up Guzzlord because he's got the Float Stone. Draw the N that we so desperately need. N. So it would be nice to hit a Dark Energy or something to get the Hoop up and at least damage his Palafin so that it's in Red Banquet range. Draw six. So this is about as good as it gets. We've got the Evo Soda for the Lipard, the Twin for the Zoroark to take the knockout, force him to respond with the Seismitoad, and we do have the Beast Ring, and I should have exactly two Darks, but I'm not sure I want to play it right now, because I'd be committing four to the Guzzlord. I guess it would take a lot to knock it out, but we'll at least start here. Evo Soda, grab the Lipard, attach Twin to... Zorork. You gotta do the beast ring now, right? I could wait till next turn. You could, but what's the point? I guess it wouldn't be the, the end of the world if you knocked it out, because it would leave Zorork able to attack. Alright, fine. We'll, we'll beast ring. Grabs two darks, attached to Guzzlord, but he's only doing 120 right now. I could always blow her my own float stone if the need arises to have a muscle band on him. And really what I'm just deciding is which of these three cards I'm trying to discard with trade most likely it's going to be clara because if i'm able to stretcher the coughing like glarian wheezing could still be useful you might need the clara to get an extra energy back so that you can yeah. actually attack into the seismitoad it's quaking zone ability is kind of rough that is true yeah and cynthia and caitlin's going to be a little slow with how behind we are so we'll trade with <laughs> cynthia and caitlin two cards that are not great i would like to get one of my other basics down but that's okay for now, stand in, and we'll mind jack the knockout. Palafin goes down. I'll promote rainy form, cast form with the free retreat. So I do need the Galarian Moltres at some point, but I'm sort of eyeing this boss. Get the Toad out of the active and potentially take two prizes, so I will grab the boss's orders. Draw. Here's my energy. Attach water energy to Seismitoad. Seismitoad's Echo Voice is going to take an easy knockout on the Zorak, so I like that. And I'm about to Colrus for 7. I have already played the Ultra Ball out of my deck, so I don't think it's very likely that I'll be able to thin my hand to less than 5 after the Colrus. So I'm going to Abyssal Hand first. It's a really good draw off the Abyssal Hand. Slam that Pot Helmet on Seismitoad, and then Colrus for shuffle draw of seven, the pot helmet, just making the seismitoad a little bit more difficult to deal with, requiring that not only Alex have an extra energy attached, but also deals uh, what, 190 damage to take the KO. It's just a lot. I'll get seven. I was able to find evolution incense, which I'm very thankful for. I can get... Croconaw and evolve my Totodile into Croconaw, uh, I may be able to get for Alligator online soon. Ben Chisui and Basculin retreat into Seismitoad, and Echo Voice for 120 damage and the knockouts. Promote Guzzlord, draw for turn. So 
immediately I'm thinking I'm in a, a fantastic spot. We've got the boss to get the croconaw. It'll also reset Echoed Voice. So I don't really see a situation that he could knock out the Guzzlord next turn. I'm in the position to get Galarian Moltres off the prizes, which if he does knock something else out is now one-shotting the Seismitoad. But really what we're looking for off this trade, which I'll discard Evolution Incense, is the Sneasel, which we did get because that is one of the few things that is going to be able to knock out the Seismitoad in one hit is the Weavile. So we'll play Ultra Ball. Need most of these cards. The two that I don't immediately need, I guess, would be Gear and Galarian Weezing. Search our deck here for Sneasel. Boss's orders. Pull up the Croconaw. No. And Red Banquet. Knockout. And I get two prize cards. Definitely want to get the Galarian Moltres out of the prizes. I could see an argument for Stretcher, but I think grabbing the Dark Energy in case we're not able to play Clara would be a good option to power up Weavile. And all of a sudden, we are tied back up. That is tough. Draw. I need to decide where my energy is going to go. I could start powering up the Intellion. Intellion's got 160 hit points. Kind of tough to knock out. That's good. Attach the Splash Energy to Intellion. Floatstone to Octillery. Play Professor Juniper to discard my hand. Draw seven cards. This Guzzlord is going to prove to be tough to knock out. Use Aqua Patch to attach water energy from my discard pile to Intellion. And I like this hand for next turn, so that's good. Definitely want to attack with Seismitoad, so I'll retreat into Seismitoad. I'll use Echo Voice for 120 damage. All right, draw. I really think just what we need to do is set up enough attackers that he just will never be able to overcome it. Uh, so I'm going to evolve to Weavile, attach a Dark to Weavile, Clara, ooh, not play Clara. I forgot I don't, ha I forgot he didn't knock out the Guzzlord. I was planning on him knocking out the Guzzlord. Trade away this research here, draw two. And would you look at that, we drew better option. So I will retreat into Hoopa. Guzma up the Basculin. That can't be correct. Yeah, I got to leave four abilities on board so I can watch. Ah, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, isn't Octillery just objectively better to take? But okay, I see. Yeah. Weavile doing 50 times the amount of abilities he has. The cast form, very nice for me, putting that at 200. So basically force him to deal with it. And then at that point, we can figure out what we're going to do if he does that. Red Banquet for knockout. Take two prizes. Take the only two that matter, Trainer's Mail and Rescue Stretcher. Promote Octillery. Draw. I've got a route here. This is definitely tough. When Guzzlord takes four prizes, that's a lot to deal with. But we can deal with it. I need to go scoop up net on the cast form. And there is scoop up net still in the deck that would deny the fourth ability. Attach Luxurious Cape to Intellion. Water energy to cast form, and I don't know. I get three, you get one. Bench Brooklet Hill and Abyssal Hand for a draw of three. Scoop up nets the cast form into my hand. Retreat into Seismitoad and. Echoed Voice for 120 damage in the knockouts. Promote Weavile here. Probably going to end up attacking with it. Draw for turn. We get the Blower, which is great because if we can trade into the Dark Claw, we can just win the game. So trade away Dark City. Did not get it. Professor's Letter. And you're out of Dark, right? Yeah. We have Dark Patch, Clara available to set up another attacker because really what we're looking at is we're going to have to two-shot this thing. The question is how, and I'm not sure if we can. Let's fail the Professor's Letter. Nest Ball. Spiritomb. Building Spite on Spiritomb, so he'd be doing 70 damage. Keep in mind you cannot attack right 30. now. Isn't this basic Pokemon only? No, dude. What? Yes, man. <laughs> I think we just lose then. This card's even better than I thought. <laughs> <laughs>
still correct to promote the Weevil, I think. I mean, because like you could just go for win, but you're in a really tough spot. Yeah, now. we're owned. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> Drunk. Alex does have a win con if he can find Versus Seeker hiding dark. Play Hisui and Heavy Ball. Fail it. Play Mallow and Lana. Discard Cast Foreman for Alligator to heal the 10 damage off of Seismitoad. Switch Octillery to the active spot. Attach Water Energy to Octillery. All Abyssal Hand for two. Play Super Rod to put three Water Energy back into my deck so that you don't have the Wing Con of Mountain Munch. <laughs> Attach Water Energy to Octillery and Retreat into Seismitoad. Echoed Voice for 120 damage in the knockouts. All right, I guess it's now or never here. Promote the tomb. If you find exactly Hiding Darkness Energy and Versus Seeker, you win with Guzma, my I, artillery. I know, I know. Trade. That is not going to do it. <laughs> um, teammates, you know, you never know what could be in the deck that we're missing here, right? Yeah, that's not going to do it. Uh, yep, this game's yours. GG's. GG's. Yeah, that was a really close one. Bang. For some reason, I was under the impression that it only affected basic Pokemon, so I was like, once I evolved to this Weavile, what does he do? Yeah. <laughs> the, the Seismitoad is crazy. I mean, forcing your opponent to have that extra resource, just that extra energy to announce all their attacks. I never got to use Seismitoad's attack for 220 damage, which is what Echoed Voice does the following turn, which is just crazy. If you allow it to attack back-to-back -back turns, it's doing 220. You were able to boss around mm -hmm. it once. The Seismitoad kind of kept switching in and out. But even so, even just swinging for 120 damage, forcing your opponent to have that extra resource can be really disruptive. Going into game two what are you hoping happens with your deck i need to set up better and i need you to set up worse last game setup wasn't terrible yeah, that I was think solid the wheezing is extremely important i think actually the game would have gone a lot differently if you didn't get that seismitoad so early and i ascensioned being able to attack for one getting the ability lock and sort of locking your hand down would have been very helpful all right let's see how game two goes would you like to go first or second we'll go second again sounds good to me I'm very pleased with the fact that this deck worked at all. I have to say, that was my first game ever that I played with it. And this is my first draft ever. I feel like it, it did what it was supposed to do. That always feels good. Yeah, the Seismitoad is uh, more legit than I initially thought. I mean, you see 120 and you're like, eh, 120 on a stage two? I don't know. And that's what I thought, too. I mean, when John originally played it against me, I was like, eh, you know, that's cute. And then I got destroyed by it. <laughs> <laughs> The other problem is, like, bossing around it to attack is, is is fine, but you can only do it so many times. Eventually, you have to deal with the size of toad. You're just delaying the inevitable. The inevitable. Yes. It yeah. will keep rolling. If yeah. it doesn't switch, it's doing 220 every single turn, which clears almost everything. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> the Ghost Lord again. Draw. Got a real solid-looking opening hand with Quick Ball, Palafin, and Ball Guy for next turn. I've got Sobble in the active spots. So long as it doesn't get knocked out, I should be able to Ball Guy for an out to Drizzile and maybe get moving from there. I also like potentially powering up this Palafin really quickly. That seems good. Start off with Quick Ball. Discard the Water Energy as I've got Aqua Patch in my hand. Let's see what we have available. First scan through, I feel like I don't have any major players prized. Maybe the Croconaw. Yeah, didn't see Croconaw. That's okay. We could just aggress really quickly with this Palafin, which just seems so enticing. I'll quick ball for Finizen. And play it to my bench. Aqua Patch. To attach a water energy from my discard pile to Finizen. Attach water from hands. Pass to you. Draw. We've got an okay opening hand. Save everybody the time and play the Sui and Heavy Ball. Take a look at what we've got prized here. No basics. TM Turbo Energizes prize. We won't be getting that off now. And a boss is something to keep in mind. Nest Ball. So I think a Hoopa here could go well in just researching this hand away. 
trying to get either the Dark City or the Floatstone, knocking out this Sobble, at least forcing him to find some sort of switch out and taking away the Drizzile option would be great. Nest Ball the Hoopa. Play Trainer's Mail. Nothing that I want. I don't really want to Iono right now. And you're having a small hand. I don't want to give him more cards. And we're planning on researching, so we'll go ahead and fail that. Dark to Hoopa. Research away Clara and Letter. Didn't hit a switch out, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. Town map. We at least got all the basics that we could pretty much want. Purloin. Sableye. I actually think quick balling to start getting the spear tomb building spite up would be nice. Last game it wasn't really something that I went for, but I could see it working out well. And with the versus seeker for next turn, I'm kinda keen to get rid of this tag call. Quick ball. Or we just grab the coughing and say, if you knock this guzzlord out, we go into coughing, poison you and lock down your abilities. I think that's actually a way better play. Grab the coughing. Unfortunately, no mountain munching this turn, but can't have it all. Bench coughing. Excavate. It's a rescue stretcher. I'm fine to discard that, but it's something we'll need to keep in mind with Clara down, and we're pretty much going to be limited to Super Rod. Pass to you. Drop. Nice top deck of Octillery. It's going to be Ball Guy for me this turn, so let's do that. It's time to get some balls. To start setting up our guys, the Seismitoad was very effective last game, so may try to go for that again. Level Ball can get Drizzile, allow me to actually attack this turn and knock out the Guzzlord. We definitely want the Remoraid, as I just top decked, the Octillery to allow me to draw some cards. Probably want Dive Ball over Ultra Ball, just because my hand is not, you know, I'm not like super trying to Ultra Ball out of that hand, so. With Ball Guy, I'll get Dive Ball, Nest Ball, and Level Ball. Play Level Ball. And with the Level Ball, I'll get Drizzile and use Shady Dealings for Floatstone. Play Nest Ball. And we're going to Nest Ball for Remoraid. And then Dive Ball. I guess I'm thinking, what's going to be like the best bet to deal with your next threats? Probably just get the Toad. And then maybe I can Rare Candy into this for alligator in my hand. Dive ball for Totodile. Evolve Finizen into Palafin. Floatstone to Drizzile and Retreats. That's a turn to Justice Kick for 210 damage in the knockouts. Take my prize. Uh, the turn to 210 is too common with that deck. Promote Coughing. I would really like to get Weezing up this turn. Draw. We did get the Floatstone. I would like that on coughing just in case this doesn't work out. Sneasel, Floatstone, and we're gonna preemptively excavate here. There's a Guzmahala. It could be good, but I feel like I sort of need to get Weezing in play now. So I am gonna discard it versus Seeker for research. Research for seven new cards. And we hit it, which is great. Evolved Weezing. Be able to slow him down, hopefully a little bit. If we can survive a turn with no two tens coming our way, that would be great. Attach. And hold, I... Hold on. <laughs> Where's my thing? All right, very good. So I'm just going to severe poison you. All right, poison. And I'm taking four damage counters between turns. And because of Weezing's neutralizing gas ability, none of my abilities work which is tough because I was planning on using Octillery to draw cards. Draw. Evolve Remoraid into Octillery. Totodile into Croconaw. And Death Punch. 30 damage to the Weezing. And 30 damage to the Sableye. And I take four more damage counters. Ugh. All right, so that went great. That's exactly what we needed was for him to not knock out this Weezing. Draw. And really what my thoughts here are is that I know that he aqua patched earlier. Knocking this palafin out now would make it somewhat difficult for him to recover without a Raihan. 
in that case, though, he would just be knocking out a Hoopa, and we could kind of just divert back to plan A of throwing Weezing in the active, so we're probably just going to retreat into Hoopa. And I'm going to attach an energy to Sneasel, and I really just feel like I can't afford to end right now him into a new hand. Um, retreat into Hoopa, excavate, super odd, we need to leave that in there, as I said earlier. Assault gate for knockout. Okay, Palafin goes down, 90 damage, and you take a prize. That's tough. I kind of need all, all of these cards, to be quite frank. We'll grab the Raihan. Promote Drizzile with the Float Stone and draw. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty solid. Evolution Incense. Evolution Incense can get me that Intellion. Honestly, I was worried that Alex was just going to sit there with the wheezing and let me rot. Very excited that he decided to break the lock. That is fantastic for me. With Evolution Incense, I'll get Intellion. Evolve Drizzile into Intellion and use Shady Dealings. I get to search for two different trainer cards. That's so broken. I'm going to get Raihan, definitely, and a Professor's Letter. As much as I like Croconaw's ability, I probably just want to get this thing evolved up so that it doesn't easily get picked off. I'll evolve Croconaw into Feraligator and use Professor's Letter. Search for Water Energy. Attach Water Energy to Intellion. And then Raihan, an Energy to Intellion. And I get to search my deck for whatever card I want. I'm going to get Brooklet Hill. Use Abyssal Hand to fill my hand to five. Brooklet Hill to search out Hisuian Basculin. Play Super Rod to put Finizen, Palafin, and Water Energy back into my deck. Ultra Ball discarding Iono and Counter Energy. We'll go get Finizen back. I really like the synergy between Intellion's Aqua Bullet and Palafin's Jet Punch, too. You can really math some things out. Like here, I'm going to hit the Sableye for 20 more damage with Aqua Bullet, and then it's just a Jet Punch away from being KO'd on the bench for an extra prize later on down the road. So I really like that. And I'm very pleased with how this turn has gone. It's Aqua Bullet for the knockouts. 20 damage to the Sableye. Promote the Galarian Weezing. Draw. And we kind of just have everything we need. Now that he's down to four prizes, we've activated B-String. The Guzzlord is in the discard, and it will be scary dropping this Super Rod, but I think we kind of have to. Bump Brooklet Hill with Artisan. Super Rod, and I am going to opt to get the Dark Energy. And I will leave Hoopa in the discard pile. And then we'll use Artisan, get the Guzzlord. B-string, and then here we'll play teammates, get the Weavile online with a muscle band to be able to knock out this Inteleon. Still don't have the lie part up, which is a bit unfortunate, but we'll make do. Well, I guess we won't make do, but... <laughs> Evolve, muscle band, and I will use the attachment for turn on Ghost Lord. Retreat. Evil Admonition for 170 damage. Yep, Intellion goes down. Dang, that is tough. I was thinking that maybe Intellion could survive that turn. We do need an energy in hand pretty bad. We'll grab a dark. This is our last basic dark. This is a tough choice. I have to decide, do I want to go Finizen, Evolve into Palafin, Jet Punch? If I do that, I mean, there's only two Pokemon with abilities. Weavile's only doing 120. It's not a knockout. Basque Legion could take the knockout on Weavile, but then you just open up Guzzlord. Basque Legion gets KO'd by Guzzlord, and then we're in a pretty compromising position. So I think I want Finizen here. Draw. Use Artisan. And we can go get our buddy, the Timpole. It's time for you, Timpole. Let's go. Top deck to Water Energy. So I do have the guaranteed... Attack. I think I was planning on using research this turn, but Irida is looking like a more promising option since uh, the only piece I needed was the water energy. Irida can guarantee the Palafin. I'll probably go with that. Water energy to Finizen. 
And do I care to Irida first? Irida could get me the Palafin and maybe like Versus Seeker, you know, and I could like Raihan again if I need to. I think I'll do that. Play Irida. And with Irida, I'll get Versus Seeker and Palafin. I'm a little bit behind on energy attachments right now. So I like having the Versus Seeker just in case I need to Raihan again to get a really powerful attacker going. Evolve into Palafin and Abyssal Hand for a draw of three. We use Jet Punch for 30 damage to the Weavile and knock out the Sableye, take a prize. All right, draw with an N in hand. We're probably just going to try to slow him down with Wheezing, get that in Guz range, and force him to get a switch out off of a few random cards. So Bench Zorua. Artisan, try to set up a backup attacker in case everything goes painfully wrong in Spiritomb. Oh, and the question is, what do we attach this dark to? We've already got five on board. This is the final basic dark we would need, at the hiding dark that's in the deck. So I'm looking at either attaching this to Guzzlord, Spiritomb. No, we're going to retreat the Weavile here, so we'll hard retreat the Weavile into Weezing. And I think just putting it on the Weavile is actually fine here in case we need to default to attacking with him. Building Spite. N. Yeah, this is tough. Three cards. There are outs in the deck that get me there, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. I could also totally brick off of this. Three is not a lot, especially with ability lock. I'll get four. Not too much better, but it's something. We did get the U-turn board that we can at least drop on Purloin. Still no Lipard. Could really use that right now. Bump the Artisan with Dark City. Severe poison. And Palafin's poisoned again. <laughs> Palafin just keeps getting poisoned. And it takes four damage counters between turns. We'll draw. I actually did find a play off of this. If we could knock out the Guzzlord this turn, that would be crazy. So I think I have to go for it. Play Buddy Buddy Poffin. Buddy Buddy Poffin will get us our free retreater, the cast form. Just go straight to the bench. Guzma on Guzzlord, which moves that Galarian Weezing out of the active spots, making it so that my abilities are active once again. This is tough. All right, so if I go Luxurious Cape to Palafin, it's got 210 hit points. You could definitely get to four abilities in play and knock me out in one hit with Weavile, so we don't want to put that there. But I do want to draw an extra card because I need to find this water energy to take the knockout on Guzzlord. So the Luxurious Cape is going down. It's got to beat a Feraligator. That's fine. 280 HP. That's a lot. And then Abyssal Hand for four cards. And we did find the water. We'll attach that to Palafin. Retreats into Palafin. That is about as good of an outcome as I could possibly hope for there, I think. Justice Kick for 210 damage in the knockouts. Yeah, that's pretty detrimentally bad. Throw up the Galarian Wheezing and draw. Oh, we've got a Dark Patch. Oh, man. I mean, we're going to have to use just about every attacker we can. Building Spike. Throw another 10 on him. Hopefully he'll be ready soon. I would love to knock out the Palafin with something that's not the Weavile because it doesn't have an ability and if you were to evolve that Basculin, but I just don't think it can be done. Pokegear. So we did get the Raihan, so it could be done by attacking with the Zoroark with a Dark Patch in hand or even just grabbing a twin with the Raihan. I actually wouldn't be able to do that. I'd have to get, it, uh, get the Zoroark with the Raihan. And I think that is kind of my best bet here. So we'll go ahead and grab the Raihan. Still leaving the Hiding Dark in the deck for Spiritomb later. Raihan, put a Dark Energy on Zoro here. Search our deck for Zoroark. Evolve. Dark Patch. Stand in. And Mind Jack for the knockout. Yep, 160 damage. Palafin is a goner. Alex takes his third prize. Boss's orders. 
Um, thankful that my hand did not get disrupted there. I've got quite a strong play that I can make. Promote cast form with the free retreat and draw. Versus Seeker for that Raihan. We need that. And I'll attach the water energy from my discard pile to Timpole. Search my deck for Rare Candy. And use Rare Candy to evolve my Timpole into Seismitoad. Attach Splash Energy to Seismitoad. Play Rescue Stretcher to shuffle back in Sobble, Drizzile, and Intellion to the deck. I do have four abilities in play, unfortunately, so that Weavile is still doing just a lot of damage. Part of the deal when you're just playing the water deck. Abyssal Hand for draw of three. Hot Helmet to the Seismitoad, which doesn't make a difference for the Weavile, unfortunately. Ugh, that is all we've got. So I can retreat and... Echoed Voice for 120 damage and the knockouts. He's really just got it all, huh? Weezing. Let's see. All right. Draw. So we have to get another energy on this Weavile to be able to knock out Seismitoad. And unfortunately, the best supporter in our hand to do that is Iono. Did not think he was going to respond or else would have grabbed the double colorless. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Iono. And you probably didn't think I was responding with a Seismitoad. No. I was... <laughs> The rare candy and the Raihan and everything. I was like, oh my goodness. Anyways, draw three. We got a chance. Evo Soda. Finally, the Lipard makes its way out on potentially the final turn. Trade. Oh, I'm correct. So we did find an energy, so we'll buy ourselves some time. Retreat. Attach a twin energy to the Weavile. Which is, that's the perfect one to hit, because now the Hiding Dark is online, should I need to attack with Spiritomb. Building Spite the Spiritomb. And Evil Admonition for 220 damage minus 30 from Pot Helmet, so 190 damage. Seismitoad goes down, unfortunately. The Splash Energy brings the Seismitoad back to my hand. Energy gets discarded. Alex goes to two. And I'll draw for turn. Okay, this is your time, Hisui and Basque Legion. This is why you're here. <laughs> we'll evolve into Hisui and Basque Legion. And all I need to do is find a water energy, and I win. Bench Temple and Abyssal Hand for a draw of three. Water energy, retreat, and grudge dive for 120 damage. That's GG's. Not going to lie, that Seismitoad was the star of the show there. The Palafin, also completely nuts. Being able to snipe 30 damage here and there, and then take huge turns like the Guzma 210. You're just like, uh, okay, I guess my guy is vanquished now, right? <laughs> like this thing I was working on. I was working on that Guzzlord, and now it's just gone. I anticipated the lack of Excel and all the good attacks costing two. I anticipated that being a bigger deal than... I think it was. You were able to use Raihan twice, which just got you there. You didn't even have to use the counter energy, which I do think the counter energy is good, even though you were hating. I didn't originally have counter energy in the deck. I didn't use it once in either of those games, but Alex was like, you gotta play the counter. I mean, and I think it makes sense. It can yeah. get you that kind of instant punch if you're a little behind, so I do like that. It didn't go great, that series, in a deck that I think is very good. I definitely consider Dark to be one of the top decks in Gym Leader Challenge, so it was really promising to see the Palafin, Seismitoad, Feraligator deck really hold its own. Unfortunately, I didn't get any attacks in with Feraligator, but Darkness doesn't have the biggest Pokemon in Gym Leader Challenge. Having to do 280 damage never really mattered. It was always better to go with like Intellion or Seismitoad against your deck. The only thing that doesn't die to the Seismitoad is what, the Guzzlord? Yeah. So you don't really need the Feraligator very often. That was say The only time I was kind of scared of the Feraligator was actually when you attacked with the Intellion. What I was worried about was that I wouldn't be able to return knock it out if you had chosen to knock it out with the Feraligator. It would have 180 hit points. Oh, so even with yeah. the Muscle Band, I was only doing 170. But you wanted to set up the Sableye for a Jet Punch knockout, so you attacked with the Intellion. So I was at least able to return knock. Yeah, yeah, but. yeah. No, that was cool. I mean, those are some good games, too. A lot of back and forth. I definitely was pleased with the, uh, the outcome of those.